Welcome to the South Carolina Trade Talk podcast. My name is Anastasia Mukherjee, and I'm a senior international trade specialist with U.S. Commercial Service, U.S. Department of Commerce. Today, I would like to also welcome Dr. David Duplass, Professor of Strategic Management Entrepreneurship at the Tommy and Victoria Baker School of Business at the Citadel. David is joining us today as someone who's engaged throughout his career in international education, most recently here in our home state of South Carolina with College of Charleston and now the Citadel. And during this past year, he has played an active observer role in the formation of Study South Carolina State Consortium. Welcome, David. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello, thank you for having me. Right. Today, I would really like to focus uh, and perhaps draw on your experience in on what it is that makes international education, whether it's a study abroad program or a diverse, the diversified community um, on campus, so important in developing our young minds and promoting community growth and diversification. Well, thank you for the question. Uh, you know, what, what's amazing here is that I actually came to the United States as an international student myself, uh, embarked on an airplane, was looking for a way of learning. Uh, I had been lucky enough to have lived in the Middle East, um, but still I wanted to experience what the American education system really had to bring uh, to bear. Uh, and I will say that um, these experiences uh, and, and the, the fact that you would immerse yourself into a full culture. Although America is a very large country with a lot of different subcultures, every part of the country brings in different sets of facets and people and so forth. But you know what I've been very lucky is to be able to put that personal experience into a passion that I'm in now and leading international experiences. There's nothing better than a study abroad experience. And whether you're considering studying into the United States, obviously, South Carolina is open for business. We would like to encourage you to consider uh, South Carolina as a destination for some of your educational needs, whether it be on the graduate or graduate program. There are so many different opportunities out there. Uh, what you have to understand is the study abroad experience is really about opening the mind of the individuals because as I have myself studied abroad, meaning coming into the United States, but also taking people, I've actually led 13 study abroad experiences out of the United States for international based uh, or American based uh, students, taking them to places like Cameroon, Africa, France, uh, the Middle East, and every single place, whether there be a study, uh, an international study of service learning opportunity uh, in Cameroon, Africa, to actually building uh, computer labs and bringing entrepreneurship education to people, to people studying global commerce. Uh, and you're actually going to Dubai, which Dubai is known for the Middle East as a place of wanting to do business, very open to doing business. But regardless of how similar or likely, none of them have been what the students actually expected it to be. And so I really want to encourage people to be very open, very open to the idea of even if they choose to be on a home campus and choose a specific university to consider one or two. I even recommend it to all my students. This is you ought to have had two internships and at least one study abroad experience, whether it be short term or long term. I think there's nothing better than living in a foreign country to both immerse yourself in the culture, but also learning specifically about the language, whether it be Arabic or French or Spanish or German uh, or, or Portuguese. And so a lot of different languages out there, whether you decide to go to Brazil, um, and all of them come with opportunities. And there's a lot of opportunities for partnering. Uh, and we're very lucky to also have a pretty deep, well-connected network of international educators in the state of South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Well, what a wealth of experience. Um, could you talk just a little bit about how does this experience that your students have had now affect everything around them when they come back? You know, the, the students, first of all, they'll never come back with the very same mindset. I think that's the idea is that all their assumptions about how people were doing things, what they would talk about, uh, the customs, uh, you know, we experience, unfortunately, other people's cultures through movies or media, especially today's world of, of, of various uh, modes and modality that people are using. And the reality is none of them are what people perceive them to be. Uh, and so to actually see a student feel that it actually has changed my life, 
Uh, many of them still uh, touch base, contact, speak, uh, share pictures, uh, uh, have a remembrance, and they'll they'll usually identify that a study abroad experience or an experience in the United States. And I advise a lot of students who are coming from foreign countries, whether it be somebody from Japan, somebody from uh, South America. I even have a person from South America who lives in China, uh, speaks fluent Chinese. Uh, and so these individuals, first of all, are very grateful for the ability to actually really be part of it. You know, one of the things that actually makes America's educational opportunities really unique is that you really feel that you can be part of that campus usually experience and you really have the opportunity of immersing yourself here. And so when you take a student and take them on a study abroad experience and try to give them that lived experience, I have to tell you, uh, all of them will remember those. They remember them five years, 10 years outside of their actual experiences. It must create a very special bond between them as well, I imagine. Yes. All right. Well, from all of that, from your own experience on getting on that plane, from uh, speaking to international students here or students who are going abroad, uh, can you talk a little bit about what is it that students are looking for when they're looking for an institution? Um, because I mean, I'm guessing they're doing a lot of research before they get on that plane. And I'm sure they're also, their parents have a lot to say about where they're heading. So could you yeah. give us a bit of an insight on, on that checklist, for, so to say? Well, you know, the beauty, especially in South Carolina, we really have such a diverse set of offerings. Uh, we have uh, 84 college and universities. Uh, we have 235,000 people who study in the state of South Carolina. So this is not just uh, ending up in the middle of, of, of a place. Uh, and, and the fact that our state is certainly South Carolina is fairly uh, well uh, dense populated, connected without necessarily being a very mass vast, uh, it's pretty easy to travel throughout the state. So reputation, quality, in some cases rankings uh, on some people. So obviously you're seeing different types of rankings. At the end of the day, the diversity of the institutions that are out there is only going to be as important as the match it is for the actual students. So it is not necessarily quality of life. We're talking about, you know, on average, it takes most students about three and a half different majors change by the time they start at the college or university level and then by the time they graduate. And it's okay. That's exactly what the American college experience really offers, that it is not structured in a way that if you actually have chosen a particular measure, you're bound by that path and, and you either pass or fail and you actually return home, which is common to a lot of other systems. Our system is designed with flexibility. Uh, there are obviously certain things requirement depending on the universities, both on the admissions requirement, but also possibly moving from majors to majors or schools, but it gives you a lot of flexibility and also a lot of the abilities to actually transfer not only your skills, but your credit. So if you actually felt that, you know, this place was more of a match than this one, and maybe there's, so it's a completely flexible uh, a framework, uh, which a lot of people don't really have. Uh, so that's one. Uh, obviously ranking, you'll see our universities uh, in the state of South Carolina certainly rank really well, uh, both nationally, but internationally. Uh, so we have some uh, number ones in, in multiple entities, whether you'd be looking in, in business, that's certainly my area specifically, but you're also looking at uh, graduate, undergraduate, am I looking at a ladder? Uh, am I looking possibly at starting, but eventually growing into a master's program? Am I looking into the diversity, which is where I want to do a liberal arts uh, underpinning at the beginning, uh, and then eventually leading myself to something more specific, whether you want to be going to law school or graduate program or medical school, or dental school or engineering. So there is just an ecosystem that's really there to build the South Carolina economy, which by the way, is also very important. We have 1200 international firms in South Carolina from companies. And for a lot of people who may not know this, all the X3s and X5s uh, are made in the state of South Carolina uh, and exported. And I think that's kind of like the, the, the some fun facts, but it tells you a little bit about how valuable the quality of our of our workforce, the quality of our education system really is put to bear uh, here. And when we say made in South Carolina, uh, we are now getting to have the deepest uh, port uh, on the Eastern seaboard is coming online, which means international trade. And all that really helps students also understand that 
the value of the education in the classroom is tied into the experience in outside of the classroom, both from an experiential or residential for some uh, meaning and, and, and interacting with students, but also internships. You know, how do you grow professionally as you prepare yourself for a career? Uh, for some people, I even say an internship is the perfect way of learning what you don't want to do in life. Uh, but at the same time, learning the skills of doing what? Talking to people, engaging in a professional setting, uh, uh, building your network. Uh, and obviously, we're very close to Atlanta, Miami, New York, uh, with the quality of life. The beauty of the state uh, is really what drew me. Uh, I, I started originally in the Northeast, and it drew me down here because of exactly the, the, the type of people, uh, the, the, I won't say the laissez faire, but the very calming way of doing business and, and building uh, your education. So it's been really, and so students should be looking at a very complete, so that the parents, they should be looking at a nurturing place where we have top schools, a lot of flexibility, a lot of options, but at the same time, understanding that um, it's a very flexible program. So I'm hearing flexibility, I'm hearing hands-on experience, I'm hearing a great location, not only within itself, here, the South Carolina is a beautiful state for sure, but we're also so closely um, situated to some of the more popular areas, which are popular because they're well known. So maybe uh, put, putting your hat back on to that international student that was about to get on that plane, what can a state or institutions within the states do to help um, educate, to kind of uh, make students and their parents more familiar and comfortable with an area of our really large country that not so many international folks might know about? Well, uh, you know, we're very lucky to actually have a network of individuals who are really trying to work to uh, combine the offerings. So we actually now have uh, the South Carolina uh, Coalition uh, for Studying Abroad, uh, and it is currently hosted on the um, um, South Carolina tra uh, SC Trade Org, uh, if you might be interested. Uh, and it is a consortium. This is uh, uh, likely-minded individuals who want to offer opportunities for people. And for parents, at the end of the day, quality of programs is one of them, but you also have to realize that that's about 10% of the actual college uh, person's experience on uh, what happens outside. So you want a place where you know it will be uh, uh, the, the, the pollution issue, the, the hussing and buzzing. So we have decent sized cities and agglomerations, but they're not the type. So obviously if you're uh, uh, an LA, you know, type of person, uh, you know, then you seek that. But even that, as I said, you really have a, an hour and 20 minute flight out to Miami or an hour and 45 minute flight to Miami, you have the, the options uh, available to you. And so I think for parents uh, and for students, it's just knowing that there is that uh, breadth uh, of institutions. And I recommend, really encourage everybody uh, uh, to actually consider reaching out uh, to the uh, coalition uh, specifically, uh, the ones who are trying to make their offerings uh, known uh, throughout the, the, the state, but also throughout the world. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. So the, the coalition that David is mentioning is the Study South Carolina State Consortia. Uh, they are, they can be found in the sctrade.org at the moment, uh, and the new site is coming in the near future. Um, but thank you so much for mentioning their name. And I do know that they're, they've been working hard on um, putting their efforts together, and they're always looking for folks to contribute, to join um, and promote our incredible state of South Carolina and to bring more international students here um, so that they can enjoy everything we get to enjoy. And David, you're, you're located near Charleston and, and that's, I, you talk about Miami or New York, I would much rather just come to the beaches of Charleston and enjoy the, the culture and the history and just the beautiful climate there, I think would be, and, and the quality of life. So. Um, is there anything else you want to add about um, just international students um, experience and um, what, what you would want our listeners to hear about um, attracting these international students to, um, to their institutions? I would say uh, seek out uh, conversations with people. Obviously, with the world of technology now, you have ways of connecting. So for parents or for students, 
reach out to a typical program of students. I know it's not necessarily very easy to actually be traveling unless you actually are coming into the United States and do a travel program and visiting various universities. But really reach out and find out from, from other students. Uh, uh, obviously, schools, nothing replaces being able to talk and see it. Uh, and I do know that uh, many of our institutions in the state are making also good use of virtual reality, uh, where you actually have the tools to be able to understand what it is to actually experience a classroom setting, what it is to actually live in a particular place. Uh, and so uh, listening to some lectures, uh, being able to take a, an online or, or a live course uh, that's delivered uh, via technology. So you get to experience, I really encourage you to seek out what the best of what higher education really has to offer. And then that will help prepare you to be thinking about making that very important leap uh, forward to actually commit uh, to getting your bachelor's degree or your upper level educational uh, degree, whether it be a, a master's degree or higher, uh, whether it be medical device or, you know, it doesn't really matter. So uh, be very open-minded. I will say that South Carolina is open for business. Uh, reach out to these individuals on the consortium, uh, reach out to people within the various programs. I do also know that the embassies, as well as the consulates to other worlds, I usually have immense amount of resources uh, and they actually have individuals who are dedicated in most of the time, specifically to actually answering questions about uh, the, the studying in the United States. And many of them actually have a traveling group of individuals who actually come and visit from universities to actually get to share via panels and visits and so forth. So an immense amount of resources, look for it, one to decide a little bit what your criterions may actually be and then choose uh, in a good way uh, and, and, and really enjoy it. Uh, it's been the most formative decision that I've ever made uh, coming and landing in the United States. I thought I'd be only coming for a four year education and certainly I've been here since 1990. Uh, and so 31 years uh, where I have not only got an education, I have actually received four degrees from uh, U.S. institutions, uh, and I've also married somebody here in the United States and calling the United States my home, so, but. That's wonderful. That, I mean, I think your story is, um, is a best example of not only how you changed, but how you have affected the rest of the community, right? You, you married somebody here, you now contribute to our society. So thank you so very much for sharing. Thank you so much for making that choice and getting on that plane and staying and uh, being a part of our South Carolina community now. So thank you so very much. Well, thank you. Okay, and folks, uh, this is part of our series on the South Carolina International Trade, Trade Talk and uh, please join us on our future recordings. Thank you, Anastasia. Thank you.